Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius. Welcome back to the podcast. And in this podcast, I'm going to be offering a few tips or lessons learned from my recent uh, trip to Italy last week in the hopes that uh, some people may find these points interesting or useful in your own trips. So without any further explanation, let me dive right into the, uh, the pointers and tips. The first thing I want to talk about is the use of this website, Hotwire. It's a, a, a website, that, a website that, that's designed to help people find hotel rooms. And you know, I used to use hotel rooms a lot years ago when I would travel. And then I got into a phase where, where I was just using Airbnb all the time. Every every place I would go, I would just use Airbnb, and I thought that was great. And that's fine. It, there's nothing wrong with Airbnb. I'm I'm going to continue to use it. But you know, let me tell you something. Sometimes it's nice also to be in a hotel. It's nice to just have everything there for you and just not have to worry about dealing with someone's house or someone's room or having to wait around for uh, Luigi or Angelo to show up to let you in, or being afraid you're going to touch somebody's shower head the wrong way. I mean, there's just a lot of nuisances that can come with Airbnb. And the other thing that that's even more practical is if you're moving around a lot, like I was, I, mean, I was in Rome for a couple days, then I had to go down to Naples. If you're moving around a lot, sometimes you just don't want to have to deal with people and their games and their hang-ups and their bullshit. You just want to check in, uh, you know, lie on your bed, and just kind of flake out sometimes after you've uh, been running around all day. So consider hotel rooms, man. You know, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think you should use both. I mean, there's a time and a place for each one of these options. But... I've become a real convert to this Hotwire thing. And let me tell you how that how that came up. Hotwire is basically a service which operates on the premise that hotels don't like to see their rooms go unfilled. So what they do is they offer rooms at, at like deep discount rates, but they don't really tell you when you when you're booking the room. You don't you're not really told exactly where it's going to be. You you have to pay first and then they tell you where it's going to be where your reservation is going to be at the idea is that hotels don't want people to know that their rooms are available on hot wire they 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 don't like that because they think it's going to make them look bad and frankly no one is ever going to pay the the whole price if they know that the rooms are up for market on on hot wire so it's basically just an auction service or it's just a marketplace for the for the purchase of hotel rooms, hotel spaces. It came up for me where I I I had made a mistake in my travel plans and I accidentally uh, arranged for my departure from a hotel in Naples a day earlier than I wanted to, and it's just one of those things that it just it just didn't come together to me that I should have made the reservation for a day longer. But in any case, I had to leave, you know, uh, I had to find another place to, to stay there for an extra day. And I asked the people at the front desk of the hotel I was at if I could stay another day. They were all booked up, so that was not an option. So I had to find a hotel room. So I talked to my friend who was traveling with me, and he was in a different hotel, and he clued me into how this hot wire system works. And, uh, you know, we just worked it out that way. And it just worked out really well. I mean, I was able to get a hotel room for like 50% off the normal price. Like, a you know, a decent three, four-star hotel room for half price, which is really good. Really, really good. It was like cheaper than what you'd find in some rural hotel here in, in the States. So that uh, that that to me was a was a big deal. And I'm going to add this to my bag of tricks, my bag of travel tricks, and I'd recommend that you uh, you do the same. All right. The other, the other tips that I learned was you should take with you a, a portable charger or a power pack. These are 
like portable battery chargers and you can charge up all your electronic devices your cell phone your laptop whatever it's a, a portable power source and if you're doing a lot of driving you're going to need that or if you're in a hotel room where there's some problem with electricity let's just say or uh, things are not working out and you, you can't find a way to get to an outlet you've got a power pack there as a, as a backup it's, it's just a nice security feature to have and I had to use it a couple times and it turned out to be really really good when I was in a car driving down the Amalfi Coast you know you've got you're trying to communicate with your followers on Twitter Twitter you're trying to you know play the game of showing everybody how how wonderful you are and sending out pictures and blah 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 and your your cell phone battery dies you want to be able to get that charged up so you can use your your portable charger and you can find these on Amazon you can just type in the words power pack or portable charger portable charger power bank what anything like that and you can find them for anywhere between you know thirty dollars and fifty seventy dollars whatever somewhere around there they seem to run between the average price between fifty and sixty bucks so that's um, that's what I recommend there and the other device that I used on this trip for the first time that, that really worked out well are these mobile Wi-Fi hotspots and it's a, what what this it's a um, basically a, a cigarette pack sized a thin it's, it's a thin device which gives you an internet connection when you're out on the road so you're driving around you're driving on the ocean uh, on the on the on the beach or you're walking around a city and you need to have an internet connection uh, or you're let's say you're in a hotel and let's say their their internet connection sucks and you need to have something more reliable well this will enable you to have that and the way it works is and the one I had was a Huawei a Chinese brand H U A W E I Huawei I think that I think that's how you pronounce it um, it's a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot I think is what they're called and what you do is you buy a sim card for it for wherever you're going and you put that in the device and that gives you internet access like say whatever say it's Europe Asia Africa um, wherever or United States wherever you want there's different sim cards you can get for them and it uh, it it does the job it, it gets it, it gets the job done right for me it turned out to, to be very useful because one of these hotels that I was at had a uh, an unreliable internet connection for whatever reason yeah it, it happens it still happens in this world obviously it's uh, nothing is perfect and you have to be prepared for the worst it's not a big deal but it's nice to have a connection you know when you've got to update your blog when you've got to send emails when you've got to communicate with people you have it right there in your pocket or your luggage so again it's a backup system it's a redundancy feature it's nice to have them nice to have them and these things run about about a hundred between a hundred and 150 bucks I mean, they're they're uh, they're an investment but Let's face it, it's worth it. It really is worth it. In today's world, you just need to have connections and you've got to you've got to uh to to have it. So so check that out and see if that works for you. All right. So those are the two devices that I found to be useful. The last bit of advice was something that I learned on this trip that I think I'm going to adhere to in the future is when you're going to a place that you've never been before and you don't know the lay of the land, have a plan, have a detailed itinerary. When I was going to Italy, I had a very specific checklist of things I wanted to see. And if you've been following me on my blog, on Twitter, whatever, you'll know that I have uh, had specific goals in mind. And when you do that, it, it just it just cuts down on so much bullshit. It, it just it kind of reduces the level of anxiety that you have when you're in an unfamiliar place it really um, uh, I think 
lessens and reduces culture shock, keeps you alert, keeps you focused on the job at hand. I used to be very lackadaisical about making plans when I took trips. I would just say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go see this and we'll just kind of figure it out when I get there and we'll have to do this and do that. And, and there, there's some merit to that view. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes it's also good to have a very detailed plan because it keeps you motivated. It helps you see more and it helps you stay in motion. And I just think good things happen when you're traveling and you are in motion. You're hitting things. You hit it and move on. You're hitting it and you move on. And that's just uh, something that I found to be uh, a, um, a useful takeaway lesson. So those are the conclusions that I had, the lessons that I, the, the, the travel lessons that I learned from the past week. And I just wanted to put those out there and hopefully you find them useful also. So that will wrap it up. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.